Good, Good morning. morning. Happy Monday. It's Monday, it sure enough. Monday. And guess what? It's gray. And it's gray. Shocking. It's been doing that a lot. It has been. How was your weekend? Weekend was good. I got to spend it with you. Yay! So, pretty much spectacular weekend. We spent Saturday running around doing all kinds of things. Yes, and I we cooked. Did. And I made a vegetable chowder soup that turned out surprisingly well. What do you mean, surprisingly well? I didn't think it would be so yummy. <sighs> They're always yummy. I think part of it is because I, um, I, I made some sweet potatoes and then I used the, I love it when you do that, and then I used the water from cooking the sweet potatoes as the broth for the soup, so that gave it kind of a sweet, kind of under, undertone flavor to it. So the, that, the vegetable char, chowder turned out really well. I'm going to work on typing up that recipe and getting it on the website. Right. And for, I like your pasta dish too. <sighs> I'm not as big a fan. So the pasta dish is a, it's called sweet potato mac and cheese. I'm not as big a fan of it. I did make some barbecue sauce to put on it, so I'm yeah. hoping that'll make it better. Yes, yeah, so I like it without the barbecue sauce, but I did put some chili on it. So that you made the week before, right? Eating. That yeah needs to be eaten or frozen. Frozen so. probably at this point. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it was all good. How uh, was your uh, workout? My workout was spectacular. Okay. How come? <laughs> I did shoulders. Triceps and abs, did it all very quickly, so I got it all done, you know, and uh, felt really great doing it, which yeah. is the best part. Well, that's good. I love it when I have a lot of energy. So, and I blame your soup. You blame my soup? Yes. All right. Well, or I then. give credit to your soup. I don't know if I can blame it. <laughs> you I should give credit to your soup. You should then eat the soup, or I guess. Or actually the um, chowder. The chowder. Which is what it really was, right? And it actually turned out to be kind of soup-like, which right. usually when I make soup, it ends up more stew-like. I'm not very good at making it liquidy, but this one actually turned out like soup, so right. it's pretty good. It was yummy. It still is yummy. All right, good. I did uh, cardio today, so I'm a little bit sweaty and yicky and cold. Need mm -hmm. a shower. Yuck. I don't let them see me sweat. That's the story you're going to go with? Okay. For now. Okay. <laughs> All right, enough of that nonsense. Let's talk about something useful. Okay. Um, so the other, no, just kidding. Why is he so strange? All right. Yesterday we watched a lecture um, called How to Eat More, Weigh Less, and Live Longer. Right. Um, the guy is a little bit goofy, not quite as goofy as Russ. Yes. Well, but, that's, a lot, that's a high level to reach. That's <laughs> a high level of goofiness. Yes. Um, but the information was pretty good. It's from um, a McDougal weekend. So they, Dr. McDougal, who wrote The Starch Solution, does weekend seminars to help people learn how to eat more starches. Yeah, yeah. And so that's where this, this particular lecture was from. And they made the point that too many of us mortgage our long-term health for short-term weight loss. Right. And the sad thing about that is, is we do the short-term weight loss thing, and then it doesn't even stay off. Right. So you, then you yo-yo. You yo-yo, right. Yo -yo which is diet. worse for you than anything else. So what we'd like to be able to do is eat things the way they come out of the ground by only cooking or peeling them. Right. That's kind of the ideal situation. So if you can just eat it as it is by only cooking or peeling, then you're, that, that's ideal. And of course, putting spices on it is fine. Right. Um, so we wanted to talk about what are the foods that you can eat as much as you want and still no, lose weight. Yeah, you're not going to gain weight. And so there are, they, they broke them down into different sections. And the first section was foods that are under 500 calories. As far as calorie density, pound. right? Right. So they were talking about calorie density. And, and we've we, talked about that a little right, bit before. Right. Um, they say you look great. He I, does look great. Hey, <laughs> Pete. Long time no speak. How you doing? <laughs> um, so calorie density is how much, how many calories are in a pound of food. And we've given you a little bit of information about that before, where things like vegetables and fruit are at the 500 range and under. Some of them are as low as 200 a pound, right. like broccoli. Right. Good morning, David. I will see you at noon. You're helping me work on my shoulder. Um, that's my massage therapist, mm -hmm. guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> um, so fruits and vegetables are on the low end, and obviously nuts and oils are on the high end. Oil we've mentioned before is four thousand calories a pound. Right. So things on the low end. Um, so just oh, just to hold up on one second. Hold up. Just, okay. I don't know if anybody grasped what you just said. So okay. On one end, you had broccoli, which is two hundred calories a pound. And then trying to make it even, so they're doing pounds for everything. And then it, then it went up based on like oatmeal was 330 something or something like that. And, and we're going to have a slide about it in the talk yeah, we are that we're giving a, on Friday. Right, we're going to have to create a slide. 
but it went from broccoli at 200 calories a pound to oil at 4,000 calories a pound. It doesn't matter what oil. There's no better oil really than you know, right. than the other. So, Laura had a uh, sweet potato last night with uh, stuff on it, and it looked really good. By by the way, Peter, yes, pasta is on the list, but it's got to be whole, whole wheat, wheat pasta. Whole wheat pasta. Well, that's the one exception that you can eat that's a little more processed is whole wheat pasta. Right. So, so you feel like you explained it well? Yes, I okay. just wanted to make that that distinction. All right. and so the thing is, is that you can eat anything you want. Right. The question is, how easy is it to overeat and end up with too many calories? And that's the key. So. Obviously, no one's going to eat a pound of broccoli because... <laughs> well, you couldn't eat a pound of broccoli. It I mean, would never fit in your stomach. Yeah, I mean... Like, yeah. So you could eat as much broccoli as you want, and you're never going to gain weight because right. there's just not that many calories. Loaded with nutrients, but just not that many calories. Um, and that's true of basically all of the vegetables and all of the fruits. Right. Now, avocado is an exception because it's, got a, it's pretty high in fat, pretty high in calories. But if you are sedentary... You can eat as much fruits and vegetables as you want, and you're not going to gain then weight. Then become a couch guy. And you're going to yeah. have you're going to have the nutrients you need because you know they're in there. They're just a little harder to get out. Right. So. Exactly. So, um, and, and just because Pete asked me about the pasta, um, oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna take out her fire. So. No, go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. You're, you're doing you're doing fan. You're doing marvelous, baby. You are doing marvelous. <laughs> All right, so then the next kind of category of foods are going to be your root vegetable foods, and those are going to be your sweet potatoes, your potatoes, your carrots, uh, your rutabagas, your parsnips. Mm -hmm. Parsnips were in the chowder I made, which are, is also yummy. It's awesome, And I know yeah. David doesn't like parsnips, but really? I like parsnips. They were so. awesome. I, I dipped up no bias here. They were awesome. Yeah, so those are in a little bit higher, a little more calories per pound, but if you have any kind of activity in your life, read Peter's comment while I'm talking. Okay. If you have any activity in your life, you know, you move around for general work or you're, you do some working out, then the, the root vegetables are gonna be really good for you. And those are your starches. And that's what your body uses for fuel. And we've talked before about how your body is super inefficient at turning starch into fat, right. but it can turn starch into fuel super easily. So if you eat carbs, whole food carbs, not processed carbs, your body's gonna burn that as fuel to make you know heat and, right. and doing stuff, not store it as fat. Right, uh, to answer Pete's question, he asked about fasting. Um, I'm sorry. You will go ahead. Oh, okay. Pat say we could be a comedy skit. It's really <laughs> silly. <laughs> so, talk, you want to talk about fasting? Yeah. So, some? Pete, just really quick, jump in. Pete had asked me about fasting just now. So, Pete, what I'd recommend to you, you can either go to our website, which is RNR. That's the letter N. RNRjourney.com. And on our resources page, there's a documentary in there called "Eat Fast and Live Longer." It's a British documentary, and it's a great documentary about fasting. And it goes through a whole bunch of different variations of fasting. Um, if you look at that, we went with the 5-2 fasting, which is, I think, the last one he actually goes over in his, um, in his documentary. Uh, so if you really want a, some good information about fasting, that's where I recommend you look. Yeah. It's on YouTube. You don't necessarily have to go to our website, but we like it when people go to our website. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, yeah, someone asked me about fasting today on my page, posted it, and I gave her the exact same advice. Go right. there. And I'm going to type up more detail for her later about right. what we do, why we do it. I just couldn't on my phone because right. the answer was too long. And, again, as Robin had mentioned, uh, there is a thing called Robin's Notes and Quotes. Um, so if you become a member of one website, you're, you have access to that. And if you don't have time to watch a whole documentary or watch a, 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 or read an entire book, you get the summary according to Doc Robin. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's on the resources page yeah, if you're a We're pixelating a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, see? Yeah. It's being difficult. That's why we set up our camera, because now when I load them to YouTube, I, I load the one from the camera, not the one from Facebook that right. has goofiness. Right. Thank and you, it's just Dr. a better Bird. quality. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm going to go back to talking about food yes. you can eat. I will not interrupt <laughs> anymore. Maybe. Lies. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so fruits and vegetables, you can eat as much as you want. You cannot get too much fruits and vegetables. Do not worry about the sugar in fruits um, because it comes in the whole package. And it, we love the hearts and the thumbs up. Yes. Oh, somebody's angry and somebody's oh. saying, wow, and oh my goodness, there's a lot going on there. Um, 
Because of the package that the fruits come in, which is their whole, the water and the fiber and the nutrients and everything, the sugars that are in there um, are actually not a problem. They're not going to give you the same problems that you're going to get from processed white sugar. Right. And I mentioned before that I really wish we had a different word that sugars that are in food were not the same word as sugar like you eat in table sugar. Sugar is such a broad term. It's, yeah, it really yeah. is. So fruits and vegetables, eat as much as you want, even if you're sedentary. Super good for you. Fiber is great for you. Lots of nutrients in them. And because of the bulk... And that's the thing about these foods, right? They're so bulky, you cannot overeat them. Right. Your stomach just doesn't have room. Right. Now, if you have any movement in your life, if you, you know, get up and walk around, if you, if work. you exercise, <laughs> if you work, you know, if you're chasing your kids around, any of that. So you now you're doing more. Now we're pixelating really badly. Yes. Like, Ugh, I hate that. But you can hear me. I know you can because it works that way. Right. So hopefully It'll correct. the pixelation It'll correct will fix itself. itself. Yeah. Um, but if you get any movement at all, then you're burning more than just your basal metabolic rate, which means that the starches, which we were talking about before, the root vegetables and right. the grains, little higher in calories, but they are, thank you, Anne, for letting me know that the audio is fine. Yeah. Um, the grains and the, the starches, they're your next kind of level up. Right. And you can eat those as long as you're moving. You can also eat those as much as you want. Right. Now, the only thing being, you can't cover them in animal products. Right. So That's the mistake people make. Right. No. I say eat a potato and they're like, yay, but they want to put butter, sour cream, cheese, and bacon yeah. on it. And I'm like, no, no loaded potatoes. Do that. No loaded baked potatoes. Do not eat as much of that as you want. That right. is gonna be your that's gonna be where your problem is. Right. And also, don't cover your potato in oil before you bake it. The calorie density just skyrockets when you do that. It does. Yeah. You know, you can eat, you know, two tablespoons of olive oil and it completely ruins a perfectly healthy meal as far right. as calories and fat go. Right. And I know we've talked before about oil, how people say, oh, olive oil is healthy. No, olive oil is healthier than lard right. or tallow, right. but it's not healthy. And it's still pure it's fat. It's still pure fat. It right. still makes your blood cloudy. Right. If, you, if you measure your blood when you just eat vegetables and starches, if you look at it, pull it and look at it, and then you go ahead and eat a meal with olive oil in it, and you pull your blood and look at it, your blood actually looks cloudy. Right. Uh, it's really kind of trippy to see the science on yes. that in the pictures. Yeah. So root vegetables, you can eat as much as you want as long as you have some movement in your life. They're, and they're going to be, you know, those are the dense foods. We tell you all the time, eat your starches and vegetables yes. first. Very important. They're really good for you. And then from there, you start moving up into the animal products foods. And these are the ones that if they, the animal product protein does promote cancer. And that's something to be aware of. And if you're interested in the science, I would recommend T. Colin Campbell, uh, Dr. T. Colin Campbell. He's from Cornell University. He's, his whole lifetime of work is on animal protein and the human body and, right. and how our bodies um, use it and promote cancer with it right. um he has a book out called the china study it's very dense it's very dense it's yes very scientifically i'm, I'm dense listening book. to it with her we have it on audio actually um and i'm good for about a half hour and i start going but she's <laughs> she's like oh that's exciting that's interesting <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> closing ceremony and Anti-dairy ad. Oh, yeah, we'll have to look for that one, yes, definitely. Yes, yes. And, and so, speaking of T. Colin Campbell, his big, I don't know, um, what's the word I want to use here, um, but, but the thing that he really drives home is dairy. And, and the, if um, nothing else, and eliminate dairy. the casing dairy. that is in dairy that, is, that, that, according to him, is very toxic. I mean, they were able to turn cancer on and off depending on how much casein they fed rats. Now you say, but that's a rat, but that's how we test a lot of the things that, that we then consume right. is by starting with rats. Right. So, so um, you know, eliminate dairy, eat as much fruits, vegetables, and uh, root vegetables as you want. Right. Grains, grains are a great source of, of good protein and foods. And then beans, beans are in there too. Though again, though beans are your starches. Right. So you, those are kind of foods that they're very bulky, they're high volume, they're low density in their calories, so you can eat them and not have a problem. When you start running into a problem is when you start adding the animal fats to it, right. because those are low bulk, 
low volume, high calorie. And so it's super easy to overeat them right. because your stomach can't count calories. Right. And that's the name of the talk that we give and we're doing on Friday at the Newmark store. Your body can't count calories and neither should you. And so your body basically is looking for volume. How full do you feel? Right. And meats, dairy, yogurt, any of that, it doesn't create volume, but right. it's super calorically dense. Right. And so it's easy to overeat that and end up with way more calories than your body needs. Mm -hmm. Now, there is one section of plant food that is the same issue, and that's right. your fruits, your, sorry, your nuts and, and seeds. seeds. Nuts and seeds, very calorically dense, and they have fat in them. Now, you know we do eat nuts and seeds. We do. We usually, if we're eating breakfast, we put them in our oatmeal. I like to put them on salads. But you have to be aware how much of them you eat because right. they skyrocket. They're right next to oil in right. uh, calories per pound. And we do, and we, and we have said it before, and we'll say it again, and Dr. Esselstein also is very big on this, is that if you already have hypertension, diabetes, um, you know, coronary disease, do not eat nuts, do not eat seeds. Right. Because they are high in fats. And right. if you already have the problem, you don't want to add to it. Exactly. And if yeah. you're trying to lose weight, you're going to want to minimize um, how many nuts and seeds you take in because, yeah. because of the calorie density and the low volume. They're not bulky foods. Right. So that's something to consider. Yeah. So the, on, the, on the one end of the spectrum, the green end of the spectrum, is you've got your your vegetables, green, red, yellow, orange, um, and your um, fruits. Fruits are great for right. you. And then the pixelation is a challenge Yeah, today. it's tough today. I don't know why um, it's fading in and out. And then you've got your root vegetables, also very good for you. And you know what? They taste good. Like I said, the chowder I made this weekend is straight vegetables. There's nothing in it but vegetables and a couple of cups of almond milk. Right, right. And it is so good. Right. And I know this is probably common knowledge. But I'm going to say when she said vegetables, she also means potatoes because potatoes are in it. But I've talked to people who don't think potatoes are vegetables. Like they think it's oh, a different food group. Yeah, no, the you know? root vegetables so, are vegetables. Right, exactly. <laughs> so and I'm not saying everybody does that. I just have run across people that when I say vegetables and I said, yeah, potatoes, they say, potatoes, well, that's not that. No, it's a vegetable. Right. You know? If so, it grew out of the ground, it right. counts as a vegetable. Exactly, exactly. Um, vegetables and fruits. So eat as much of those as you want and you're going to lose weight because right. they're so bulky and they make you feel full. And I'll tell you, and what we, we watched this documentary yesterday, which, which is really you know, fascinating, is that if you started out every meal with, and I'm not saying everybody will, but just, just to give you something to think about, if every meal started with a salad and a, and a bowl of soup, you would not be able to eat a lot of the, the, the animal products and everything else because your stomach would be full. Right. So a good way of being um, satiated, but taking in, making your, your stomach think that you're full is to eat a salad and a soup before you eat lunch or before you eat dinner. But don't use a uh, salad dressing that's loaded with oil. Don't use a salad dressing. Because they oil. made the point that one tablespoon of olive oil, and think about how little that is, is about the same amount of calories as a pound of broccoli. Right. And that's why it's so easy to overeat because your body eats by weight. Right. Your body wants that bulk. And so if you don't have that, that you don't get that full feeling. And it is impossible to defeat hunger. You don't get to decide, okay, I'm just not going to eat today for very long before your body's like, yeah, we're not putting up with that. And then you're eating whatever's available you know, in, in you know, wherever you're going to the vending mm -hmm. machine. So it's a built-in built survival instinct and you don't get to beat that. So don't fight your hunger, feed it. Just feed it healthy fruits, vegetables, and uh, beans and grains. Because um, equal calories does not equal same full feeling, was right, the point exactly. they made. Right. So he had a picture where he had 100 calories of chicken nuggets, which was basically two, two chicken nuggets. And then he had a cup and a half of lentil soup. Right. I mean, and instinctively, you know, the cup and a half of lentil soup is going to make you feel fuller. Right. And the, but wine. the calories are the same. Right. So, you know, boiled potatoes are very filling. He, I have a whole bunch of foods I wrote down that he where he was comparing them. Um, and your, your body will burn sugar or fat 
for energy. It doesn't burn protein. It converts protein either to rebuild muscles right. or it converts it into fat. Right. So it's interesting that people talk about needing protein, but that's not what your body burns. Your body's not very efficient at burning protein at all. And he makes a good point about how a lot of people think when they need, uh, when they need energy, they better take in more protein. And that's the one thing protein does not do for you. It does not give you. It doesn't more give energy. you energy. It's not possible. Carbs do, right. and your body can, your brain can only burn carbs, at the sugar that it creates mm -hmm. from carbs. That's the only thing that your your brain can can, can use is right. the sugar that it gets from carbs. Right. And it said they said that your brain needs about 500 calories a day. Right. That's what your brain uses. Of carbs, of carbohydrates. 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 Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, and he, he made the point, and we've, I think we've talked about this before, that people say, well, I like to eat. Then eat. Right, but I mean, that's the point. Pick foods that are actually going to do you your could, body you could, good. You could eat your heart's and content. eat as much as you want of yeah. them. And, you know, wow. eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, by the way, again, I know we've mentioned this already. We will have an unpixelated version of this on our website at some point because we are recording this on an actual video recorder. Yeah, and I'll put it on YouTube. Right. I'm a little behind on getting stuff on YouTube. I'm, I think, at the beginning of February, but I'm working on it. Working I'm trying to do like three of them at a time. Right. So if you follow us on YouTube, you'll see them there. So if you get half to two-thirds of your calories from calorie dense foods, you're going to be overweight right? because what ends up happening is you end up eating too much of them. Mm -hmm. And then he talked really briefly about what they call um, squaring the curve, which was mm -hmm. he showed this, this, and you're not gonna be able to see it because it's pixelated, but the life curve where people slowly decline and get um, more ill as, and then they die. Right. And what he wants us all to do is live at a really, really healthy rate until we're done and then be dead. Right. You know, square the curve. So none of those diseases, none of those being in a hospital for months or, or right. slowly deteriorating, having diabetes and losing limbs and all that lovely stuff right. that the Western diet does for us. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about having that going straight, like you can see it, and then just dropping yep. off. So don't don't decline, right. be alive, and then be done. Right. And he also talks about this style of living will increase your life. So not only do you live a better quality life, you live longer. Right. I'm sorry. I put my hand in front of her face. I hate when I do that. It's all right, dear. Yeah. It's fine. So, and he pointed out that um, Okinawans, which have the longest lifespan of anyone in the world, right. eat sweet potatoes like it's going out of style. Yeah, yeah. it's like 80% of their diet. Or yep, 80, 85% like of, their, right. of their diet. Yep. Right. So, like we said, whole wheat pasta is the one exception to right. the, if you know, just peel it, cook it, eat it. Whole wheat pasta is something you can't eat, but put a chunky tomato sauce on it because Junky, that's going to yes. make you feel fuller. Yeah, especially when you made it's not loaded with all the different names you can't pronounce that you buy in a can. Right. And yeah. he made the point, don't drink your calories because that allows your allows more room in your stomach and you end up taking in more. Right. So, um, smoothies not a great option because no. they're not going to make you feel full. Right. So in effect they become calorie dense. They become calorie dense. Right. And you know, we've said before that chewing your food is part of the digestion process to get the saliva in it. And so you're going to want to do that. That's right. that's part of who we are as humans. It's right. part of our instinctually. So if you like a smoothie fine, but throw some stuff in it that's chunky whether it's It's you like know, you do. You make you make a I make it crunchy. It. Right. <laughs> I'm, I, I like to blend the fruit, but then I, I throw my oatmeal and stuff in it whole so right. that so you it, still have to chew, it. Have to chew it. Right. Yeah. Because, right. you know, that's actually a, a pretty big deal. And he pointed out the standard American diet is 32% fat. Yeah. Which is just crazy. Right. You don't and need anywhere near yeah, that. What do you much. need? About 5 to 10%? 5 to 10% fat, right. 5 to 10% protein, protein, and the rest should be carbs. All carbs. Yeah. All good, so, healthy carbs. And so for all those keto diets and Atkins diets and, and South Beach diets that tell you to, to not eat the carbs, those are short-term, and you will lose weight on those, but short-term, I'd say the greater percentage of people will not only gain the weight back, but will gain more weight than before they started the diet. And you just yo-yo, and that is so unhealthy for your body to constantly lose, gain, lose, gain, lose, gain. Yep. And that's one of those things where you're mortgaging your long-term health for short-term weight loss, mm -hmm. and there's no reason to do it. There's not. It's perfectly reasonable to eat fruits and vegetables and grains right. and lose the weight and keep it off. Right. We're talking about pushing the plate away from you because you just can't put any more in your stomach eating. <laughs> and That's we, what we're talking in about. In theory, we should all stop eating when we're 80% full. Right. Americans are lousy at that. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I eat too when I think I'm full, and then when I'm feeling well, maybe I eat too much. But as I'm eating, because it does take time for your brain to About register that, okay, I've eaten enough. And at that point, you might have eaten a little bit too much. But mm -hmm. the point is, eating a whole food plant-based diet, it's not going to matter. Right. Other than a slight bit of un uncomfort. But I mean, I don't have that bloating and all that other things associated with eating animal products. It's just, okay, I, my stomach's definitely full, but it's not uncomfortable. Right. And I think that's a big difference. Right. You know? So. so yeah, definitely look for those recipes that are loaded with the fr with the vegetables and eat your fruits whole, and you'll be fine. Right. Don't count your calories. Think in terms of food density. And how how bulky it is. Right. Right. And the key or the magic number is you want to be around the five to six hundred per um, pound per pound of calorie density in your food. I'm not telling you to look that up. That gets that's too complicated. Nobody should have to worry about that. Nor should you have to count calories. Just eat the fruits, eat the vegetables, eat the starch, and when you're going to eat animal products, if that's your choice, you eat know, eat them last. Eat them last, and you know, anything. So, what a good point he made during his documentary, which I liked, was that if you take your normal steak dinner and you decide that um, instead of eating a whole steak, you're going to cut that steak in half and replace that volume of food with broccoli or with um, a whole potato, wheat pasta. A whole wheat pasta. And the more that you can add the low density food to your plate, the, the lower your overall density of calorie your plate density will be. Calorie density will be, yeah. And that's the key. Keep lowering your overall calorie density mm -hmm. will get you where you want to go. Absolutely. So. And that'll help you lose weight and then keep it off because it becomes a lifestyle. You know, people say, oh, whole food plant-based diet. No, it's a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And right. it does become that because it come, becomes the way that you right. eat. Right. And for the record, I do not talk with my hands. Says the Italian. <laughs> so silly. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add about that? Uh, no, I think I recapped what I wanted to recap. Okay, so. cool. So if you guys are getting value out of out of this stuff, we do encourage you to like and share it so that we can reach more people and make a bigger difference. Our right. goal is to eliminate all the metabolic diseases in the world, which is you know your heart disease, your diabetes, your obesity, your high blood pressure, and your high cholesterol. So we have a little small goal of that. So right. if you can like and share us, we'd appreciate that. If you want more information from us, you can come to our website, rnrjourney.com, and become a member. And there's, it's really cheap. It's less than $10 a month. Right. And I put my recipes on there and there's a whole community page where we have uh, conversations about stuff and you can go back and look at it. Right. We also have our journals so you can see what we eat every day and we do not lie on there. No. Um, I had a, a chocolate chip cookie over the weekend and that is on there. Right. And he had some red wine and I that is on there. Two glasses on Friday and two glasses on Saturday. And then we also have our journals of our workouts and right. that we are going to be adding videos to as soon as it gets warm enough to be able yeah, to we'll not be Miserable. Yeah. We're going to add workout videos. Correct. So, and we have a, a Facebook page if you'd like to join us there on our journey to health. We'd love to see you there as well. Right, right. So, thank you to all of you for watching and putting up with the pixelation because Facebook hates us. Today, definitely. Um, but we're glad to be able to share this information. And when I uh, post the uh, link to YouTube, I'll share it on my page so that you guys can see it there right. as well. Right. Is there anything else? I think you covered it all. all Every right. time I said I have to say this, you said it. I'm like, oh, okay. Good job. <laughs> good job. All right. All right. And so with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.